Hello viewers, welcome back to our lecture series of modeling technique. In today's class, we shall try to discuss on data modeling. So before we proceed, let us start with the funny node of this particular uh, diagram. You see, a data modeling is nothing but how you are actually formulating, formatting your models so that efficiently you get able to retrieve your data as when required in whatever the format. Not like this particular CV where you are actually putting your data and you are just trying to upload this data using this kind of way. So a joke apart, but the thing is that in case of data modeling, a good data modeling technique will enhance the business capabilities of a business enterprise by making your data robust, always accessible as well as easier to be accessible. So on this note, let us start our today's presentation. So this is a one line definition of data modeling, which refer the business rule and the data model is implementing in a system in order to solidify and reinforce of this rule. So data modeling in one line, we can say it's nothing but how you are actually going to be retrieve your business rule and applying those rule in order for the organization documenting a system. So with this note, a data modeling can be segregated logically into three levels as per this pyramid structure. You see, at the outermost level or at the top level, there will be some audience or the business stakeholder. So they are basically consisting of the conceptual model of the high level end user system having no inner details. Whereas in between this conceptual as well as the physical layer that is uh, this portion, we have our logical layer of data modeling, which try to connect the conceptual with this physical layer. And the motif of this logical layer is to allow the logical representation of the data so that it could be able to separate it from the physical storage. And the finally, but in case of the physical level of data modeling, we are actually concerned about how the schema will be going to be operated on the basis of the data in database. So these are the three level of data modeling. And the audience for each of this level are different. For example, in case of the physical level, which is the most closest to the actual database, the DBA or the developer who have a full in-depth knowledge of the databases, data model and their various operation are used to work. In case of, in case of middle layer that is logical, the data architect, the business architect, the data scientist used to be work so that they will be given a kind of knowledge is how the data will be routed from the conceptual level to the actual physical level. That's in case of conceptual level, only the outside organization or the business stakeholder used to be operate. So this is the logical hierarchy of the data modeling. Move on to the next slide. You see, in this slide, let us try to represent this slide from bottom to top. So if you have a very efficient data model, which will be always supported in terms of your system representation as well as the data validity. In terms of data, a good data model always allow the minimum amount of data to be redundant and your data is needed to be robust timely as well as consistent to the subject or the relevant to the subject. Whereas in term of the systems, the good data model always try to connect the various components of a system so that the system component will be modulated in a particular interfaces for efficient work. And at the inner part, once your data model will be connected to the system as well as the system data, it will be definitely going to be supported your ultimate business so that your business opportunity, your return of investment, your responsive to the change of the market dynamics will be much more higher as well as your cost as well as operating cost as well as your risk factor are going to be minimized. 
that's why every business organization along with their strategy are always try to adapt it a robust data model because a good data model must provide a kind of edges to a business move on to the next slide these are the typical types of the data model so as we already discussed in our first slide so the entire data model operation logically consisting of three tiers the logical tier the physical tier as well as the conceptual tier the conceptual tier as it is written is concerned about what the system contains because it will be work at the outer layer of your business enterprise so that the stakeholder of your business are going to be get a kind of knowledge how or what the system contain the logical tire are between the conceptual and the physical tire which try to find out the answer of the questions that how the system should be implemented regardless of the dbma so it will be not consider the database management system or the technology that you will be actually adapted in order to store as well as you retrieve of your data whereas in case of the physical data model it will be definitely going to be concerned the how factor with the implementation factor of your database management system so the main difference between the logical and physical is that in case of physical data model it will be concerned about how your systems are going to be implemented on database or database management systems to move on to the next these are the simple comparison between the different entities the first is the conceptual logical and physical you see the physical data model having a primary foreign key because it is mostly concerned about the physical implementation of the databases and the database management system whereas the conceptual entities as well as the logical entities are more formally associated with the feature selection so these are the main generic differentiation between these three and a good models must have the characteristics of structural validity across the different platform it should be simple so that the inner details should be remain hide from the external user so that the external user will be getting a sense of the totality of the entire object or the system it should be non redundant it should be shareable and extensible as when required and obviously the seventh factor which is most important one also it can be easily integrated with the various other data sources different platform of your business concern as well as your sister concern so these are the main generic characteristics of a good data model that we have to always give our mind while designing a good data model for our business enterprise move on to the next slide these are the main significance of a good data modeling techniques the number one is it should be understanding the business required so in this connection i must tell you that the business rule are the life blood of any business because a business enterprise usually run by their own business rule and these rules are so rigidly sometimes in built inside the legacy system so that it will be very difficult to extract it those rules so in this regard the data model will helps a lot in order for extraction as well as reformulating if any changes is required in this legacy business rule in order to make it up to date market standard the second point is the reverse design third consistency across the projected obviously the fourth one is the better data quality in this side another advantages of the data modeling is that it should lower maintenance costs can be easily reusable as well as the performance can also be improved so these are the main significance of a good data modeling that's why more and more business enterprise are looking 
to formulate their business strategy with an optimal data modeling plan in order to getting the maximum advantages from it. At the left hand side, you might see that this is basically a Venn diagram representation, something hierarchical with the relational as well as, for example, the network data model, which three are the main generic data model. And the main focus is how to take the main common features from all those things so that it will be robust industry standard. This is one of the important slide I believe, which I adapted from the Carlos as well as the Stephen Morris uh, representation. According to them, the evaluation of the data model from 1960s to till date are going to be phases through the different model from the hierarchical model of the earlier days, which is basically one to many model or one to many relationship, just like a kind of tree structure, where one particular parent must may have a different children one particular children may have again a different children. In this manner, a one-to-many relationship can be able to establish. This is one of the oldest as well as the most traditional form of hierarchical model. But unfortunately, they doesn't implement it in a very efficient manner the many-to-many -many relationship, the structural data independence is not there that's why they are not that much adaptable in present business scenarios the next network model is the second data model that was introduced in 1969 which is a bit relaxation over the hierarchical model in the sense that they implemented a many-to-many -many relationship but again since the complex structure and there is no structural independence as such they are also not that much popular although for example our social media uh, site sets are mostly formulated on this network data model it has its own capability as well as feature but the more robust model was introduced in late 90s with this relational the relational data model are mostly in the form of two dimensional tabular structure, which easily implemented a many to many relationship using in the form of foreign key as well as the parent key or the primary key concept. Then there will be a concept of entity relationship diagram, which try to focus on the high level abstraction of the common feature of the entities, which belongs to a particular object. It dramatically try to focus on the main high level representation of your entire system by hiding the extra detail as when required. A later business model like object oriented, extended rational model as well as the present day of big data, no SQL, these all are basically a recent trend in order to acquaint with the huge unstructured set of data which basically works on the schema of key value pair. So this is more or less the evaluation of the data model. Let us go quickly to each of these data models, starting from the most traditional one called hierarchical model. As I said, it is basically consisting of a kind of pre-life structure where one-to-many relationship can easily be implemented. It is much more conceptually simple. It is basically data independence and much more easy cost and easy implementation procedure. Whereas there are certain drawbacks like there is a complex implementation technique, many to many relationship would not able to represent very efficiently using this hierarchical model and there are lack of structural independence. Move on to the next one, the network model. It basically also support one to many as well as many to many relationship. It is conceptually simple, but much more robust than the previous model. But it has certain drawback that the system complexity limit efficiently and the structural changes are also not considered in that much optimal manner. So this is the basic scenarios of the network model.
move on to the next as well as the more traditional model called relational model which always implemented in the form of two dimensional table you can see from this particular diagram there are two table in first table roll number name are there in the second table the course id and the subject name are there when you are extracting the data from these two table inside your another table that is example of many to one relationship where the roll number course id from these two different table are taken into account as well as the own feature of this particular table so it provide a structural independence is much more robust and much more real life implementation one to many many to one many to many relationship can be easily adapted in this type of relational model that's why it is that much popular in this scenario but obviously there are certain disadvantage like it possible for the poor design and implementation sometime there will be a potential island of information problem like that's why the concept of big data are there because this type of relational data model are more formally used to deals with structural data so this is the three traditional data model that we have discussed move on to the next that is called entity relationship diagram model or erd model as i said it is basically a high order representation of data model which try to represent the entire system and their functioning their feature in the form of some notation this notation are written over there like the entities are represented by rectangular box attribute or the feature of this entity set for example if the entity set is student one of the feature of this student entity set is its roll number so this can be represented by a oval shape the relationship among the entity set is represented by the relationship diagram or it's a basically a kind of this type of box diamond box drive attribute we don't have a directly available value which is to be derived from the other attribute and so on like one to many many to one relationship can be established using this type of notation like the composite attribute this is again one one particular notation used in yard diagram like if we take the name as a attribute then it may, it may have primary or first name middle name as well as the last name so composite attribute are basically the sub division under a particular attribute jointly they will be referred as a composite attribute in a yard diagram representation so let us have a look of a yard diagram in order to getting a kind of sense of this entity relationship diagram you see this is basically a yard diagram of a sales model where the customer who have some feature like their name address email phone number may have customer id also which can be the primary key the customer and the credit card are actually going to be access by this relationship called has customer has credit card if it has credit card it will be verify and through this he can be put some kind of order the customer order the item again the item have the item id item name and all this type of feature this item is going to be contain some kind of shopping cart which actually provide the order once the order will be generated our e-commerce side used to be ship this order to the customer at this place so in this manner the entire high level representation of your system used to be represented using this yard diagram move on to the next this is the important aspect of our today's first class discussion of modeling technique you might see that the dimension modeling is basically a concept where a huge data set having a multi dimensional feature used to be reduced based upon the feature which are required as when for example like the time location branch item these are the four table and the fact table over there the sales fact table contain the primary key for each of this table as well as its own 
so that this fact table is basically a kind of dimension modeling where the extra dimension from this item table the item name brand for example the sold category are going to be discarded well taken into account so you can say in a very simple term the dimensional modeling is nothing but reducing the extra dimension features or the attribute from your data set while making them in order to countable for your business decision there are certain advantages which are listed there like quick time to market obviously it will be improved less time costly less time consuming less costly better performance because you are trying to work on the key aspect which you are looking for in this regard i must tell you there are two concept of dicing and slicing of your data warehouse which is much more related to this dimensional modeling because from a multi dimensional cube structure which used to be store the organization data for example with respect to location with respect to time with respect to product means a multi dimensional data cube over the period of time so when you are going to be dice and slice them or the dimensional modeling them in a much more reduced manner you will be getting this kind of representation more formally we will discuss in our later classes but for time being just try to concentrate that this dicing and slicing are almost same with some differences like the slicing is trying to provide the feature based selection from multi dimensional to for example two dimensional whereas the dicing is basically going to be selected the subset of this human activity so this is the main differences i hope it is clear dimensional modeling is one of the important aspect of the decision modeling or the modeling technique where based upon your requirement used to reduce the data as when required next the key steps in data modeling process starting from identifying your entities of business second is to identify the key property or the feature of each of these entities so that on the basis of that you could able to chalk them as when required the next is you try to formulate the sketch the rough draft of how they are actually contributed in a high level representation of your entity relationship model with a connection with the other entities of your business enterprise fourth is how this various data attribute used to be identify and work together and next how you map the attribute to entities so that the model properly reflect your entire business goals and once it will be happen you can implement them so that you can finally finalize them and validate them or validate them and once it will be validate as per your expectation you can implement them in to your real life situation so this is all about in the key steps in data modeling move on to the last slide of our today's discussion that is the benefit of data modeling as we already discussed the data modeling are providing a kind of sense to the business organization in the sense of reducing cost better market value better or as well as the optimal performance of the application high qualities as well as the relevant as well as the timely focus representation of your data as when required as well as obviously it should be also highlight to reduce the data error and providing you a better risk management so these are the main benefits of the data modeling move on to the last section that is called the disadvantage of data model let me tell you in this regard the data model are mostly conceptual that's why to develop a data model one should know the physical data store characteristics they must have some idea regarding the databases and the business enter inter enterprises workstations etc so until and unless you have a clear knowledge of this type of thing or even the small changes in one particular structure may have a lot of modification in the entire applications so that's why 
a good data model should be designed by a good data, data manager. So this is all about our today's discussion. If you have any discussion on any confusion, you can definitely write.